This is what you might have missed on BCSN's Sports Nightly. Your head football coach, Mike Jinx. One of the initial conversations Chris and I got into was who played faster. And you know what I mean? And I think I kind of ticked him off, almost lost his dang job. I said, no, I think we play a little bit faster than you do. And he's like, no, I, I don't think so. We play as fast as anybody in the country. So uh, this is a funny story. Probably I got home that night and he, he hits me up. Okay, you run 83.5 plays a game. We run 82.5 plays. But we, it's because we were always ahead bigger than you guys. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to play at a great tempo, and uh, that'll be an important part of our offense. We get to run that many plays, run the same style of offense, um, score a lot of points. You know, that's, it's fun for us. You know, everyone on offense loves it, um, and the defense loves it too. It makes their job easier for them. We score more points. Going from Clawson to Babers was a huge change for us, but going from, you know, Babers to Jinx, I think it won't be as big as a change as we might think it will be. I, you know, but... Um, you know, because he runs the same offense. I don't know anything about the defense yet, so we're going to find out about that. High octane offense for this team the last couple of years. He comes from Texas Tech, same situation there. Was that part of the process and the, and the thought going in to, to kind of get someone to fit the players you already have? Right. So, you know, I've never uh, told a head coach whom to hire as assistant or whom to recruit or what play to call, although I'd like to. So the X's and O's, um, you know, I have to follow the statistics. And um, so, we, you know, we look in the general area of, you know, what do we have in place now and what do we think we can continue doing? So certainly um, there, there's something to that, but uh, it comes down to the person. It comes down to the leader and the fit and um, no, no, better, no better man of character to come in here than uh, Mike Jinx. Very excited now to be joined by the new coach of the Bowling Green football team, Mike Jenks. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate Welcome it. Welcome to Northwest Ohio. And uh, why Bowling Green? You know, <laughs> how many times you get the opportunity to take over a team that just won the MAC championship? You know, and not only that, if, if you open up that cupboard and it's still pretty dang full. <laughs> so uh, it's one of the better jobs in the country. I feel very blessed and fortunate and humbled to be here. A lot of folks, when they get their first head coaching opportunity in the college ranks, it's a rebuilding process. Right. That won't be the case no. for you. Uh, what will be your goal over the next month as we head into the new year? What are some of the things you're looking to do? Obviously, assistant coaches you'll need right. to fill and recruiting. Well, we've got, we've got to get our staff together. And as soon as we finish this interview here, I'm hitting the road. <laughs> I've got about three or four days to see as many kids as I possibly could and, and keep them committed to, to, to Bowling Green. You talked in your press conference about the talent pool of Ohio high mm -hmm. school football. But you come from Texas. Right. And there probably is no bigger talent right. pool than Texas it, high school football. It's pretty similar, man. I mean, I, I've got great respect. I've done, I've done a little homework, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Uh, the thing I will say, and what we're going to do, uh, we're going to open our doors. You know what I mean? We're going to embrace the Ohio high school football coaches. Well, I want them around. Uh, if there's clinics or, or whatever's going on, uh, we will be there. We will have a strong presence, and we will build these relationships uh, uh, one coach at a time. And we, we, <laughs> this is our home. All right, uh, and we will take care of our home. You know, we'll still spot recruit some areas, Florida. You know, it, it makes sense for us to get out, go out in Texas because we have those ties there as well. But we are going to take care of home, and Ohio is home. Twenty years ago, I want to take you back a little bit. Okay. 1995, you just graduated college, and I hear you were waiting tables. Yeah, you're doing your research. Coming, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and some coaches from a local high school mm -hmm. were there, and they somehow talked you into becoming their quarterbacks coach. Right. Take us back to that moment in time and, and how you've progressed until becoming a head coach at the Division One level. I tell you what, things, I'm just a big believer that things happen for a reason. And the chances of me working that, that night and the chances of this, it's, it's kind of like the same thing with, with, with Chris. It was, you know, a, a guy wanted me to, to get in my order. I was coming off work and, and uh, you know, he was fairly persistent and, and, and asked me what I was doing that time. I just finished playing quarterback, had about three hours left to finish up my degree. And what are you going to do? I have no clue. You know, because I, I didn't have a teaching certificate yet, and, and he went out and, and checked on my story, called my college coach, you know, called my high school coach, and 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 then and it, it was a great life lesson because they said great things, not about me as a football player, but as a man. You know what I mean? And uh, he came back the next day, offered me a job, and you know, from that point, I hadn't looked back. Uh, you were the head coach at Steele High School sure for was. about seven years mm -hmm. in Texas. You started that program from the mm -hmm. ground up, right? How did that kind of help shape who you are as a coach and as a man, having to build something from no nothing? No doubt. You know, uh, to trying to develop an identity uh, and things of that nature, um, it had a huge impact. Uh, and, and, and it's similar, to, similar excuse me, to, to, to getting a college job because, you know, in this, you know a lot of times in, in, in these transitions, these coaches leave and they take the whole 
the whole staff with him. So you're able to bring your own people in. You know what I mean? You're able to, 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 to develop um, those core values and, and, and have like minds in that room. So uh, it was, it's unique to do in high school football. Uh, so that was, that was huge and, and helping us uh, become as successful as we did as fast as we did. Here at Bowling Green the last few years, the identity has been Falcon fast. The right. offense, high octane, run a lot of plays. But you come from Texas Tech where right. they do pretty much the same thing, a little bit different scheme-wise. Right. Will it be Falcon faster now once you take over? I tell you what, if, if <laughs> that's a good point. If it, uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but if it broke, I'm not, not looking to fix it. You know, uh, We do have them by a play. You know, and, and I'm going to tell you, as a head coach, all I care about is winning football games. Bottom line, but being in an offensive room at Texas Tech, we've been trying to catch Bowling Green all year long. Uh, that's the thing that makes this transition fairly unique, you know, and that it it'll be a smooth transition, I believe, for our, not only for our staff and our coaches, but it'll be a smooth transition for our student athletes. You mentioned Toledo. Rivalry is right. a big part of college football, and these two schools within 20 miles of each other. Six but years, huh? Six years. It's all been right. since this program has beaten the Rockets, that team up north. Obviously, that'll be something that'll be on your mind as you head into next season. Right. Uh, no doubt. I mean, it's a rivalry game, and, and, and you know as well as I know in college football, you got to win your rivalry game. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, my main focus, like I said right now, is keeping this recruiting class together. And I think there's a team down south that we open up with. There'll be a lot of fun to play, too. I uh, want to talk about head coaches in college football. As of today, the coaching carousel is still mm -hmm. moving, but you're one of just 10 African-American head coaches in the FBS ranks. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's not as much diversity as there should be? And, and what do you think needs to happen to increase the diversity in college football? Well, right now, that, that, that's, 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 a, that's a million not a question. You know, I, I think that uh, uh, the thing you got to remember, they're only 128, and, and we've got to, just, just as head coaches, do a good job of uh, uh, interviewing minority candidates. You know what I mean? Uh, and I think that's the first step. And then from there, you know, the cream will rise to the top. As you head into what will be a busy offseason for you, uh, will you have any time to rest? Uh, what about your family? You know, you've got a wife, three children. Right. Are they going to be moving up uh, anytime soon? There, there's a lot of moving pieces to your right. life at this moment. I mean, right now, it, it's, it's full speed ahead. And, and again, former coach, former principal in education, she gets it. Okay. You know, and uh, we'll get her up here as soon as we possibly can. Uh, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that kind of support system at home. So. Uh, uh, it is important to want to get him as soon as we possibly can, but uh, uh, because that's that's a, that's one of the blessings of being a head coach. You know, if, if you're not on the road as much, so really, in all actuality, I'll be home a lot more than I ever have been with the past. Probably gonna freak them all out, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, excited about the opportunity, man. Can't wait to start. Be sure to watch Sports Nightly weeknights at 10:30 on BCSN, and follow us on Twitter at sports underscore nightly.